Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. And I want to uh, bring you along for this uh, little production run that I'm getting ready to uh, start on today. So this guy right here is the Windy Hill Foundry six inch mach uh, machinist square made by Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry. All right, this is his own pattern, his own design, and he cast them himself. And he has these for sale over on his website, windyhillfoundry.com. All right, this is the one that he uh, sent me during his first batch there. I never have gotten around to machining it, but that's all about to change because we're getting ready to start on that today. But I've got uh, more to share with you because we actually have a very short production run of machining these guys, okay? So I wanted to um, show you what we're going to do with that. I also wanted to give this an honorable mention since we're talking about uh, Windy Hill Foundry. This is also a product that he cast himself. This is the nine inch Rucker Camelback Straight Edge. Uh, he makes these for Keith Rucker over at vintagemachinery.org. There's his uh, part number right there. And this is also a gift that, uh, that he had given me. And I did machine the bottom of it over at Lance's shop. Um, you know, last year when I was over there, we had this set up on the uh, little 16 inch G&E shaper and I was just cutting in the bottom. But I haven't finished it yet, but I just wanted to share that. This is also another product that uh, Clark offers for sale over on his website as well, okay? But I'm gonna show you what we got to do with this and I will bring you right back. So here's the full stack of the production run. I have 12 total of these machinist squares that Clark had sold that was uh, the, the customers had requested that I do the machine work on them uh, whenever they purchase them. So Clark had got with me, asked me if I would uh, handle that. And I said, yep, I'll get it done. So they've been uh, patiently waiting for me to get these things machined. So that's what we're getting ready to start on. And my plan for these is I want to machine the sides flat first. And this is gonna be the side that we will end up machining first. You can see these little spots here. Those are the vents that Clark puts into the, uh, into the mold there, the sand mold, whenever he's cast it. So he has to cut those off. So since this is a little uneven, we'll start with this side, all right? Then we'll flip it over. Since we'll have a machine side at that point, then we'll machine this side, should be nice and parallel. Then once we get all of the sides done, then we will uh, move on to cutting both of the, uh, the ends right there, the end faces, the uh, measuring faces in our Hopefully our result is going to be nice and square and a true 90 degree angle right there. All right. I'll move these out of the way and I'll show you my idea for our little production setup. So this is my uh, 12 inch fireball tools fixture plate that I machined. I've got a whole uh, series on machining this guy right there. And this is the tool that I wanted to try and utilize for this little uh, short production job. So we've got a total of 13 to cut. And uh, my, my plan is to try to do two at a time. So we'll have one set up on this corner and one set up on that corner right there. So what I have done is take, these are quarter inch dial pins right here that I've got pushed into the uh, reamed holes. And then these are just a couple of bronze bushings that I have made to slip over them just like that. And let me show you what I'm trying to do here. So we're gonna start, since this is the better side, we're gonna start with this side down. And I wanted to put basically a fence using the dial pins right here at a 45 degree angle. This is supposed to be nice and 45. I will, <clears throat> we will get it set up in there like, like I got right there. And then we'll double check and make sure that our um, our angle is good, but I feel like once we get started on uh, setting them all up at this 45 degree, since these are precision right here, we should be able to push those up against that fence right there. And then once we machine it, they'll all be at 45, or I'm sorry, 90 degrees right there. So these are just going to be stops so that once I, once I push it up against the, uh, the pins right there, you know, we will have a, a, a stop to keep it kind of centered in the right spot right there. All right, so here's the other side. We'll be able to set one up over here as well. Same thing. Just pull it, just pull it back against the two pins right there 
and then I'll have to just tweak. These little clamps are just served as stops, as I said, so because you know I want it centered on the uh, fixture. So I'll pull it back against the two pins, and we'll have this clamped in the uh, in the big TMX vise there. And once that is uh, set in place, we'll have a couple of studs in here, just like so. The reason why I had to make the bushings for the uh, the quarter inch dial pins is because I needed to bring I needed to bring them back a little bit. I couldn't push them against the pins because then it then it kind of slightly covered up the uh, half inch tapped hole there. So it's just a spacer really to push it back where I needed to. All right. We'll use one strap clamp just like this. All right, and then we will clamp it right there, right in the center of the uh, of the ribs. Just snug that down. All right, do that same on both sides here, just like that. All right, so that's the idea. And what we'll end up using is my new Tungaloy. I got a, a really nice three inch base mill, a little bigger than what I need, but it's a, it's a new mill that I got and, uh, and it's working really good. So we'll use that and we'll come across here and cut this face, cut this face, take those out. We'll just keep putting them all in there until one face is cut and then we'll flip them over on the machine side and then start cutting the other, the other face there. So that's my idea on how we're gonna do this little production run. Once we get all the faces cut, both sides then I'll switch out to an end mill and then we'll be able to come in here and we'll be able to mill both of these sides of the squares in uh, in one setup so cut that one cut that one take those out put them back in there you know two more and just uh, keep keep working at it and then once that's done these will pretty much be finished off I'm gonna wait to see how the uh, finish comes out side milling with an end mill and if I'm not happy we may do a setup in the shaper to where I'm using a shaper tool to finish that out. But that's going to add a lot of time uh, to this little production. So I don't know if I'm going to go that far with it yet. We're just going to wait and evaluate it once I start getting these machined. All right. So we'll go to the K&T mill and get this set up and start doing some machining now. curious about this uh, the weight of this vice I weighed it with my scale it weighs 142 pounds I know I got a lot of people that disagree with uh, me using this tool in the manner that I use it, which is I'm using it in the manner it was designed, but it works excellent for doing this right here. And this is why I wanted it to remove these vices like this and to remove those chucks on and off the, uh, the lathe there. Whenever I install the uh, vertical head here on the mill, I always have to uh, tram it. And it's usually side to side, it's usually never more than one thousandths off. So you can take the, um, the head on the uh, cast where it's mounted to the machine and just bump it with the uh, nylon hammer. And usually you can get that side to side right where you want it. So half a thousandths resolution test indicator right there. And I'm turning the uh, actual tool holder, this guy right here, and trying not to disturb the, uh, the indicator. So uh, side to side, we're near zero. So what I'll need to do is uh, we'll move the we'll move the table down slightly. Now front to back, I always check as well, and it's a little more tricky because the head, once it's bolted on there, it's there. 
and there's no way to do it other than shimming and I have to put a very very small shim at the very top of the head where it's bolted on to get it last time I did it I was within a half a thousandth so let me uh, I got to move it move the table a little bit so we'll see where I'm at now right, that's on one right there So we're almost one thousandths off front to back. So I need to I need to do some more shimming, and then I'll uh, show you once we get it there. Do that to uh, both sides and then we'll recheck it. Okay, we got the shims in there, got it tight, and I believe I got it within a half a thousandths anyway. We're on the, uh, we're half a line on the positive side of the zero. And just a skosh over the, the one line on the positive side, so we're within tenths front to back right there. Actually, it looks right on it. Yeah, because it's just past that line right there. So we're, caught, we're talking about a six inch spans right there of uh, near zero, zero. So our shims do the trick every time on the top end right there. We're getting everything set up. And uh, once again, my plan has been foiled because I don't have enough uh, reach out here with the, uh, the cutter the way that this vertical head is mounted up. So I can't get all the way out here to cut this uh, square over here the way I want and so I think I'm just going to take this set up off and I'm just going to do one at a time over here on this side right there and uh, once this is set up then I'll, I'll just have two dimensions that I can hit every time on my DRO up here on uh, the center line on where to cut it so we won't really worry about it there's probably other things that I could do if I wanted to spend more time getting this set up you know to block it up and bring it in over here higher but that's not the way I wanted to do it I wanted to have it just like this where it's hanging off where I could basically come in and just mill a big square on a you know two at a time but we'll just we'll just do one at a time over there and I'm gonna run one as a test to make sure my setup is good and then I'll bring you guys back and we'll go ahead and I'll start showing the production I, I ran uh, two of them on one side just to uh, test everything because what we're gonna do is I'll clamp one in there and we're gonna run it down and then run it across this way. So we'll do X, Y, and then once I'm through with that one, we'll take it out and then we'll use Y axis first and then the X axis down here to the end right there. And it worked out real good. My, uh, my new face mill is doing excellent. This is my new Tungaloy face mill that I purchased. It takes the, uh, I believe it was the SNMU inserts and they're doing an awesome job. So we're running at around, uh, I believe it was uh 350 surface feet a minute i believe is what i've got it set at and we're running uh feed rate is uh 16 inches a minute which is um where i've got it set is about three thousandths uh per tooth there the chip load on it okay so let's go ahead and uh, i'll move these off by the way and i'll show you what our what our plan is for this little setup like this by the way i'm using a piece of uh, brass thick brass shim stock underneath the clamp just to kind of, uh, for one, protect the casting, and two, it provides a little bit more stickiness on the friction hold there between the clamp and the cast. All right, so we're gonna set this one off. You can see we got a really pretty finish right there. This line is just where I had uh, stopped the feed in Y and then went to X. So as I get moving on this, I'm gonna try to transition to where I don't actually stop anywhere. I just start moving the other direction and then disengage the other feed as soon as I start the other one. All right. I am gonna use my air on this just because we've got a lot of dust right here. And I just want to get it off of the uh, the machine face here where the clamps are going to be setting just like that 
not trying to blow it all into the wipers. We're just, we're just getting the dust off. All right, we will set another one in here and I'm just gonna pull it back squarely. See how the, the end clamps are, are centering it up, okay? And it's pulled in on my bushings right there. Apologize for my hand being right in the middle of the shot there. I guess I got the camera in the wrong spot there. All right, and then I'm lining the tip of the, uh, the strap clamp up on this uh, little ridge right here. I want it to pull down right about there, right on this little part of the raised part of the casting. All right, make sure that I'm pulled back square, snug the clamp and then we'll tighten it up just like so. All right, let's make a cut. Let the uh, cutter run off the edge there. All right, manually move it back. Once you get right to the edge, I just manually um, push the table, and that's the end of the feed. So we're right at the uh, the end of the part, but we're clearing it, so we can start our next square right there. So I think I forgot to mention the amount of material that we're removing off each side is going to be 80 thousandths. I am going to be machining these to a nominal three quarters of an inch thick. So once we get to that side, we'll make sure that we have the machine set so that we can uh, measure this and it'll be right at three quarters of an inch. It'll be a little bit smoother whenever the camera's not <laughs> right here in front of me. I'm just giving you guys a shot of what it's looking like. All right, so we'll start our next cut. Everything's going nice. We'll keep trucking along, get, getting all 13 of them done now.
Hanna, wrong direction. chill right at the end you could hear it you can actually see the shininess right there so a little bit harder right there on the very tips of this one which is uh, one of the things you got to uh, kind of deal with sometimes with the castings this one right here also has a little bit of chill right on the right on the corner a little bit tougher right there on the ends okay we've got all 13 of them milled on one side so now it's time to flip it over and then get our uh, depth established so that we can finish this. Uh, we'll finish them right on three quarters of an inch. And uh, so far, no, no problems. There was just a, there was a few of them in the batch that had a little bit of the uh, little harder spot right on the corner. This one right there was probably the worst right there, but hasn't been any issues. And my new face mill is doing excellent. The inserts are doing excellent. The uh, corners are not burned up or anything, so everything is good to go. So we'll set them right back in there just like I've been showing you right here on this corner. 
and I'll get the other side and build the sides.